afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And I'm the van man today, guys. Getting to film my favorite type of motorhome to film one. I do not get to film very often. That is a Class B camper van. It's funny for me to say that since I'm six foot four, 300 plus pounds. And, you know, and I'm filming the smallest type motorhome you can buy, but I still love them, guys. I actually owned one of these and I've owned several vans over the years, Class B van and some conversion vans. And I mean, I drive a van every day. So I love these things, they're great. They're the perfect all around vehicle. You know, they're small enough, you can use them for an everyday vehicle large enough you can camp in them you can travel in them you can use them for day trip vehicles overnight vehicles camping vehicles cross-country vehicles uh, second vehicles i mean just like i said they're they're just really amazing machines and the van life's great guys i love it now not everybody's going to get them you know y'all i know a lot of people's going to look at the price of these vans it's all for the same price you know i can get a class a or a class c you know twice the size and you're right you can or less but you know your class a or class c is not going to get 14 15 miles a gallon your class a and class c is not going to pull in and park in a regular parking space and have the maneuverability of this class b van now will it man like i said it's a the van life for those of you that are in it you get it you know what it costs to get in it you know these things are expensive they're expensive for me to get and uh but you get what you paid for. You get the convenience. You know, convenience costs money, it comes at a premium. This particular one is we actually took in on trade here, guys. Y'all remember uh, the one that dad had I did a few weeks ago? Um, this, uh, the folks from Florida seen his, wanted, to ha wanted it. They traded this in on it. We kind of trusted each other. And they bought his side unseen. They, we traded for this one side unseen. And everything everybody told the truth everybody was happy everybody's came in in excellent condition and this was their trade-in guys this is a 2012 pleasure way excel ts and guys these are 20 feet five inches long and these are a wide body class b and a wide body means past the forward cab it sticks out about four or five inches and it gives you the it gives the designers the ability to do more with the floor plan you get a forward facing sofa you get a king bed and unlike like the road trek 190 and things like that you don't have to take a shower in the hallway you get a fully enclosed bathroom without having to take a shower out where everybody can see you and uh, this unit's got 52,000 miles built on a ford e350 chassis big heavy duty one ton chassis same chassis my own personal motorhome's got this unit does have the big 6.8 liter Triton V10, so it's got all kinds of power. So if you're worried about going up the Rocky Mountains, uh, things like that, slowing everybody down, or towing something and slowing everybody down, <laughs> this is the same motor that's in some of those great big Class A's. This thing will fly, and I may even get to drive it later if I can get one of my salespeople freed up. And of course, it is a 2012 model, guys. The only thing wrong with it that I can tell cosmetically is it's got, a, it's got a stripe right here on the side cracking a little bit. But again, it is a 11-year-old van. Great price on it. It's hitting on Firestone tires. We drove it. Uh, we delivered theirs to them, and we picked this one up. Drove it several hundred miles to them and drove this one back. Done great. No check engine lights. Dash air is ice cold. The only fault with this and like most van life people guys they didn't use a generator y'all know most and for those of you in the van life you know most y'all never use generators it's only got 180 hours on the generator it does run and it will run for a few seconds and it dies and it floods out so it's probably got some carburetor issues it does have a 2.8 onan generator we will fix the generator guys i've got it on the service list we will fix it we do guarantee it to run and put out like it's supposed to but right now, as of right now, it does not run, but it will crank up and run a few seconds so you know that it's not locked up or anything like that. So yes, we are gonna take care of that for the 59.9 price. And, uh, but y'all, and, and y'all know my opinion's well known on that. I don't think, generally, unless you're on a CPAP machine or an oxygen machine, that's something most van life people really don't have much of a use for. Or, you know, hardcore van life people. But, hey, if it's there, might as well use it, right? 
because we're basically I'm running I've got the dash air running right now and it's actually keeping the entire van comfortable in a 90 degree day out here in the middle of the sun middle of the parking lot with no shade beautiful paint though guys it's beautiful color y'all know pleasure way they're built up in Canada they're not a very this is not a big box brand like a road track you know this, these are these these aren't built in the quantity like the road tracks are they're a little bit more money when they're new than a road track but you get what you paid for um i mean the best way to put it road trek is kind of like like let's just use steakhouse for example uh road trek is kind of is the most popular van because they're the most mass produced fans they're kind of the chilies or the applebees of the road trek of the class b world where the pleasure way is more the ruth chris the pleasure way the airstreams and the coach houses are more the ruth chris's of the steakhouse world where again road trek still the same but they're more the chilies the applebee's type still a good van but they're not near as um i mean they're still well built but they're not i guess as sturdy built as these I mean, the V10, the E350 chassis, they didn't have to do that. I mean, they wanted this thing to last. You know, the bigger motor is going to push it less. It's going to run uh, cooler because it's not struggling. I mean, you're not even going to, this motor's not even going to break a sweat pushing this van in any kind of terrain. You do have a crank out awning. You do have the roll stability control uh like ford has on it and basically that means if you hit a curve too fast it will use a combination of the abs um braking system to actually engage some of your brakes disengage the others got four wheel disc brakes to actually allow you to take the curve at a higher it's not gonna it's not gonna of course break the laws of physics but it will allow you to take a curb at a higher rate of speed than you would without having that RSD or roll stability control technology. And that is a Ford, uh, that is a Ford safety feature that is in most newer Ford vehicles and is actually pretty, pretty impressive thing once you experience it. Or just slow down, you don't have to worry about it. But mistakes do happen. Let's look inside guys. And there's no smoke or pet odors in here. And um, it's amazing how much that roof or that dash air will cool this van off. And I'll go ahead and shut that door, save the AC. It does have a fantastic vent fan too. Now you've got leather captain's chairs that look great. You've got a backup camera that they've added to it that works great. Factory stereo, sounds good. Power windows, power locks. Does have the extended mirrors, so you can extend them out if you're towing something. Tilt cruise, keyless entry, of course. Uh, 52,230 miles, no check engine lights. Of course, you've got traction control. You've got auxiliary line in, so I'm assuming this isn't a Bluetooth. Being 12, it's probably not. Of course, you can buy a little Bluetooth, you know, adapters that plug in your cigarette lighter uh, with FEM modulator if you need to hook your phone up to it or use the line in. Dash air feels great. You do have the table that goes right here. And you can swivel both front seats around. Tables are in here for your back and your side. And, of course, your, your, your uh, table leg. Uh, six foot two officially six foot two interior height but i can stand up so you're probably six foot three six foot four in here you do have a uh, microwave convection oven all led lights got some storage up here there's some books generator 184 hours like i said we will get it running i got the water system pressurized make sure it's good it is Leather furniture, fantastic vent fan, LED lights, crown ceiling. That's where that extra ceiling height is. It probably is six foot two if you move off to the side a little bit, like the specs say. Again, no taking a shower in the hallway like a road trek. 
Um, you got a wet bath, which is all you're going to get in a motorhome this small. With an RV toilet. You know what I like about the Pleasure Way, too, with the bigger tanks? You've got a 30-gallon fresh water tank and a 25 or 26-gallon gray and black tank. So you've actually got bigger tanks than most Class Bs in a Pleasure Way. Of course, you got your double skylights with the curtains. And you've got a 3.8 RV refrigerator freezer that runs off propane, runs off electric or battery. You've got a 14 or 16,000 BTU furnace. Two burner stove top that doesn't look like it's been used. Most, most people don't cook in these things. They cook outside just because of the heat. You do have the 11,000 BTU cool cat, which does work um, with the optional electric heat pump. So you've got two air conditioners, your dash air and your air back here, your cool cat, your dash heat, you got your furnace, and then you got your electric heat pump. So plenty of ways to heat and cool this little guy. And you do have a power sofa, forward facing, and this can this right here is just set up for daytime use. You got a switch right here, you can fold it down and make a, uh, a full bed. Or you can fold these two, that table in the back actually sits down between these two bench seats. And this right here will actually make a king size bed or you can just leave the full size bed for one or the king size for two, or if you're two smaller adults, just leave the queen size down in the morning when you get up, just raise that up. Pretty cool. Storage underneath it, as well as access to the storage in the back. Do have some extra storage here. I mean, they don't waste any space, guys. This is just a well-designed, and these are solid maple cabinets too. I mean, these are not cheap cabinets nothing in here is cheap of course you look at what these things cost new no, you'll see why i mean plenty of room lots of led storage I mean, really a neat setup countertop extender you've got a 22 inch tv over here so you've got a separate stereo for back here there's of course your thermostat uh, individual reading lamps when your bed's set up. Um, great mileage, plenty of power, and yes, we. Um, I'm gonna try to drive it here in a little bit, maybe. But 2012 Pleasure Way, 52,000 miles, excellent condition. We're gonna guarantee the water systems to work, and of course, we're gonna make sure that generator works. We're gonna fix that. No big deal. Um, probably just clean the carburetor out. They use a the generator very, very rarely. In the few years they own this van, it's like they said, they run the they run the dash here when they're going down the road. And they live in Florida. They just very rarely ran it. Um, but again, guys, I know just because a lot of people don't run a generator in the van life doesn't mean that everybody doesn't run a generator. I know a lot of people have their reasons, or they just. And I mean, I like air conditioning too. I would probably run it some on a day like this myself if, if it was there. But we do guarantee it to work, so we are going to fix it. And, we'll, of course, we'll make sure your roof air works or your cool cat air works. And um, we'll make sure your water system, water heater, water... Sorry about that, guys. Forgot I had my uh, weak battery in here and it ran out. But what I was getting at, we'll guarantee the generator, uh, roof air, or cool cat air, plumbing systems to work, including the water pump, water heaters, spigots, faucets, toilet and uh, the running and driving of it for that 50 9 price and we'll leave in any other stuff to you as sold as is if it works oh we guarantee the refrigerator and freezer to work as well so you know that's the major stuff that can ruin your trip if it doesn't work uh anything else guys you know it's up to you to check it or not check it these folks were just using this van so besides the generator i seriously doubt you're going to have many much of any problems with it but come look at it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Hire a third party inspector or come look at it yourself, inspect it. Shouldn't take you long, especially once we get that generator going. In fact, I just ran, it ran for about 30 seconds and died. Uh, so it, and then I smelt the, the flooding where it flooded out, smelled old gas. So it's definitely carburetor needs to be cleaned out or replaced, no big deal. Um, I mean, 
my guys can knock it out in a couple hours and at the very worst case if it needs a carburetor replaced what's that on a 2.8 three or four hundred bucks and a couple hours labor no biggie um but we'll take care of it guys make sure it runs puts out like it's supposed to but this unit is 59.9 haggle free firm not gonna take a penny less it's a lot of and i was actually uh i think we're kind of underselling it a little bit especially with that v10 um in the brand of pleasure way i mean this is a heck of a brand guys for that price this is like one of the big three coach house pleasure way and airstream that's your three big brands when it comes to a class b as far as top quality um among others but that's the three best known big brands that everybody loves um at least in the older style ford chevrolet dodge running gear um i'm not talking about like the winnebago views and the b pluses and stuff like that i'm talking about in these uh you know store to the original style class b camper vans without getting into like the sprinters and the transits and which mm, I'm still more partial to these. I mean, I mean, those are great in their own way, but these are what I'm more familiar with. And, and, and these seem to, these designs seem to really stand up to the test of time. So anyway, uh, smash me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. Feel free to give us a call if it's something you think you're interested in. I'm going to try to grab one of my guys and take this thing for a test drive. I haven't done that in a while. I want to show you the power of this V10. Uh, yeah, it's going to get it. You know, th this would have came with a, a 5.4 V8 or the 6.8 V10. Um, and they're both great motors in their own respect. Honestly, the 5.4 this year is 225 horsepower, which would have been adequate. Um... However, if I'm doing a lot of mountain driving, even though I know the 6.8 may get a mile or two a gallon less than the V8, the V10 would, I think it's worth it because I like the power and I like the fact that a bigger motor has to struggle less than a smaller motor. So you're gonna get longer engine life, less wear and tear in your motor versus a smaller motor straining its guts out all the time. So. You know, that's why you see like these little Toyota motorhomes and stuff from like the 80s and early 90s and every 50, 60,000 miles, especially the four cylinders. The motors have got to be rebuilt. Now, they're tough motors and they're easy to rebuild. But every one of those little motorhomes I've had, you, you go through the, the maintenance logs, the ones that have them, it'll show 50, 60, 65,000 miles motor completely rebuilt. Um, because that little motor is just draining its guts out, just, just driving 55, 60 miles an hour down the road. And that was a down that was what ultimately killed those little toyota motorhomes was the fact that <laughs> and that and they couldn't keep up with with modern drivers driving 75 80 miles an hour not that i would ever want to drive an rv that fast but uh you know this is something right here guys that you can run down the interstate as fast as you want to take a vehicle this size I, even though this is more of a van than a motorhome as far as drivability I still wouldn't go over 65 or 70. I mean, guys, let's just be, let's just, you know, just take it easy. Even though I know this van could probably cruise at 75 and 80 all day long or more if you wanted to, I don't believe in, uh, you know, at RVers, we need to be kind of set an example to other drivers about how to drive correctly and speed wise and, and staying in the right lane and cruising. And, um, you know, that goes a long way and keeps, helps keep, keep us from being more regulated than we already are. Um, Cause I have, a, I have a bad feeling that regulations on RVers are gonna get a lot worse um, in the future. So um, with everything that's going on. So I don't, uh, let's not get, let's not add fuel to the fire by driving crazy as my fellow RVers. Like I've seen a lot of them lately. I've seen diesel buses running 85 miles an hour down the road passing cars you know hogging the left lane guys that's that's not good don't do that don't drive like that if you got an rv stay in that right lane guys 65 better 70 if you must but stay under the speed limit and just take it easy it's one thing i like about an rv the journey is just as much fun as the destination it, if you can't drive that slow or then i suggest getting a car and staying in a hotel room but anyway let me get one of my guys 
if there's one available if not i'll come back on and tell you uh, but if so we'll take it for a test drive and uh stay tuned but thank y'all for watching call before coming to look make sure it's available at 706-965-7929 financing is available with approved credit we have no extra fees besides applicable sales tax in georgia residents there is i believe a 50 dollar highway impact fee on this one it's a smaller vehicle that's georgia residents only and then of course a 40 to 50 dollar tag and title fee does not apply to out-of-state buyers but hang tight um if you got questions about this van, give us a call, 706-965-7929. I don't think it's going to be on the market long. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned. I'll see you, hopefully, from the driver's seat. All right, everybody. Now we're going to take a test drive in this 2012 Pleasure Way, and I want to thank my cameraman, Joe, one of my salespeople. And Joe uh, will be glad to help you with this van, and I'm going, to give you his, I'm going to let him tell you his cell phone number, and you can call or text him anytime. Joe, what's your number? 423-702-1310. And you can call him or text him on that phone number uh, anytime, 2 o'clock in the morning. He don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll answer any questions about this van he want. Uh, we're going to drive, and I'm going to show you the power of this V10. Um, and, yeah, like I said, you will lose a mile or two a gallon over the 5.4, but I think the power and the towing capacity will more than make up for it. And we actually got some a free spot to get out here. Wow. Of course, I've always been a big V10 fan. Um, 52,000 miles on this thing is nothing. Not for one of these things. This, this motor won't even break a sweat going down the road. No more weight than this thing has. It's the same motor you'll see in a 38-foot Class A. Keep it up's no problem. I'm not even really trying. And I'll get on it a little bit when we get on the interstate just to kind of see what kind of pickup it's got. Of course, it's got that good throaty sound to it. Got that torque shift transmission, which is Ford's version of an Allison. And it's an E350, so it's a one ton. I mean, we're running 50 miles an hour and not even half throttle. I mean, there's no squeaks, rattles. Brakes feel good. I'm not the sh the steering wheel's not shaking, not pulling. So far, so good. We'll take it down the interstate and try the cruise control. Maybe we can uh, get on it just a little bit. Mirrors got great visibility. Looks like we won't be going back the interstate. There's some traffic. Let's see what it'll do here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're already hitting 65, 70, 5, 8. I'm backing off a little bit there, guys. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm impressed. Let's hit the cruise control. Of course, Ford cruise controls very rarely don't work, but these work fine. I've got it set on 70 and just sitting there chilling. No wind noise. Heck yeah, guys. I think we got a winner here. Very well cared for van. Smooth. Those Firestones ride great. Good, the good one-handed driver right here. Anyway, guys, um, if it's something you think you're interested in, call quick. I don't think this is going to be around very long. Joe, what's your phone number again, buddy? Four two three.
702-1310. Give a call or text. He'll be glad to help you out. Answer any questions you got about it. And thank you all so much for watching. Smash us a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. And look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.